correlation analysis is a statistical method used to measure the relationship between two variables. For example, is there a relationship between a person's salary and age? In this scatterplot, every single point is a person. In correlation analysis, we usually want to know two things. Number one, how strong the correlation is and number two, in which direction the correlation goes. We can read both in the correlation coefficient, which is between minus one and one. The strength of the correlation can be read in a table. If r is between zero and 0 0.1, we speak of no correlation. If r is between 0 0.7 and one, we speak of a very strong correlation. A positive correlation exists when high values of one variable go along with high values of the other variable. Or when small values of one variable go along with small values of the other variable. A positive correlation is found, for example, for body size and shoe size. The result is a positive correlation coefficient. A negative correlation exists when high values of one variable go along with low values of the other variable and vice versa. A negative correlation usually exists between product price and sales volume. The result is a negative correlation coefficient. Now we have different correlation coefficients. The most popular are Pearson correlation coefficient R, Spearman correlation coefficient RS, Candles tau and point by zeroal correlation coefficient RPB. Let's start with the first, the Pearson correlation coefficient. What is a Pearson correlation? As all correlation coefficients, the Pearson correlation R is a statistical measure that quantifies the relationship between two variables. In the case of Pearson correlation, the linear relationship of metric variables is measured. So with the help of Pearson correlation, we can measure the linear relationship between two variables. And of course, the Pearson correlation coefficient r tells us how strong the correlation is and in which direction the correlation goes. How is Pearson correlation calculated? The Pearson correlation coefficient is obtained via this equation, where r is the Pearson correlation coefficient x, i are the individual values of one variable, for example, age, y, i are the individual values of the other variable, for example, salary, x dash and y dash are respectively the mean values of the two variables. In the equation, we can see that the respective mean value is first subtracted from both values. So in our example, we calculate the mean values of age and salary. We then subtract the mean values from each person's age and salary. Then we multiply both values and we sum up the individual results of the multiplication. The expression in the denominator ensures that the correlation coefficient is scaled between minus one and one. Let's continue with the Spearman correlation. The Spearman rank correlation is the non-parametric counterpart of the Pearson correlation. But there is an important difference between both correlation coefficients. Spearman correlation does not use the raw data, but the ranks of the data. Let's look at this with an example. We measure the reaction time of eight computer players and ask their age. When we calculate a Pearson correlation, we simply take the two variables reaction time and age and calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient. However, we now want to calculate the Spearman rank correlation. So first we assign a rank to each person for reaction time and age. The reaction time is already sorted by size. 12 is the smallest value, so gets rank one. 15, the second smallest value, so gets rank two, and so on and so forth. We are now doing the same with age. Here we have the smallest value, there the second smallest, there the third smallest, 
fourth smallest and so on and so forth. Let's take a look at this in the scatter plot. Here we see the raw data of age and reaction time. But now we would like to use the rankings. So we form ranks from the variables age and reaction time. Through this transformation we have now distributed the data more evenly. To calculate the Pearson correlation we simply calculate the Pearson correlation from the ranks. So the Spearman correlation is equal to the Pearson correlation only that the ranks are used instead of the raw values. Let's have a quick look at that in data tab. Here we have the reaction time and age and there we have the just created ranks of reaction time and age. Now we can either calculate Spearman correlation of reaction time and age where we get a correlation of 0.9 or we can calculate Pearson correlation from the ranks where we also get 0.9 so exactly the same as before. If you like you can download the dataset you can find the link in the video description. If there are no rank ties we can also use this equation to calculate the Pearson correlation. Rs is the Spearman correlation, N is the number of cases and D is the difference in ranks between the two variables. Referring to our example we get the different Ds with this. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, 2 minus 3 is minus 1, 3 minus 2 is 1 and so on. Now we square the individual d's and add them all up. So the sum of di squared is 8. n which is the number of people is 8. If you put everything in we get a correlation coefficient of 0.9. Just like the Pearson correlation coefficient r, Spearman correlation coefficient rs also varies between minus 1 and 1. Let's continue with Candles Tau. Candles Tau is a correlation coefficient and is thus a measure of the relationship between two variables. But what is the difference between Pearson correlation and Candles Rank correlation? In contrast to Pearson correlation, Candles Rank correlation is a non-parametric test procedure. Thus for the calculation of Candles Tau the data need not be normally distributed and the variables need only have ordinal scale levels. Exactly the same is true for the Spearman rank correlation, right? That's right! Candles tau is very similar to Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. However, Candles tau should be preferred over Spearman's correlation if very few data with many rank ties are available. This brings us to the last correlation analysis, the point by serial correlation. Point by serial correlation is a special case of Pearson correlation and examines the relationship between a dichotomous variable and the metric variable. What is a dichotomous variable and what is a metric variable? A dichotomous variable is a variable with two values, for example gender with male and female or smoking status with smoker and non-smoker. A metric variable is for example the weight of a person, the salary of a person or the electricity consumption. So if we have a dichotomous variable and a metric variable and we want to know if there is a relationship we can use a point by serial correlation. Of course we need to check the assumptions beforehand but more about that later. How is the point by serial correlation calculated? As stated at the beginning, the point by serial correlation is a special case of the Pearson correlation. But how can we calculate the Pearson correlation when a variable is nominal? Let's look at this with an example. Let's say we are interested in investigating the relationship between the number of hours studied for a test and the test result passed, failed. We've calculated data from a sample of 20 students where 12 students passed the test and 8 students failed. We have recorded the number of hours each student studied for the test. To calculate the point by zero correlation 
We first need to convert the test result into numbers. We can assign a score of 1 to students who pass the test and a score of 0 to students who fail the test. Now we can either calculate the Pearson correlation of time and test result or we use the equation for the point by zero correlation. x1 dash is the mean value of the people who have passed and x2 dash is the mean value of the people who failed. n1 is the number of people who passed and n2 the number of people who failed and n is the total number. But whether we calculate the Pearson correlation or we use the equation for the point by zero correlation, we get the same result both times. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.